Yeah, he always seems disinterested, don't he? But uh, we all know he's really, really First interested. Break. Roy McLeod to break. Oh, I said last week when we were talking about the coming attractions that if Mark Williams plays as well in this group as he did in the first two matches at the Crucible last season, I think they can give it to him now. He was sensational. Yeah, he was brilliant. And, it, yeah, it's just more evidence of how good he is. And just to do it on that big stage as well, uh, as easily as it seems to be for him. Um, yeah, just incredible snooker player. Someone's going to move? Yeah. No, I'll find out. Are you both going to be standing there for long? Are you both going to be standing there for long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a couple of people, maybe in Williams' eye lines, asking the referee if they are going to be there or whether they can leave or not. He's a great exponent of sight right. The, the sight right method is Mark Williams. He was practicing earlier on today with Lee Walker, who's a, an accredited sight right coach and the world seniors champion, actually. And I think when it comes to that kind of shot, he's dynamite. Yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, you know, he, he finds his line, and of course, you've got to send it on its way once you've found it. But uh, he seems to do them both very well. Six. He's got a very Seven. deliberate approach to his shot. If you watch him, he stands right behind it and then follows that line in. With all, I think. There's always a misconception with players that are natural, that they're not working hard at it or they're not sort of got any routine. But if you watch Mark really closely, he's got a very specific routine and he goes through it every time. 13. Fourteen. He's also got a wonderful touch. And I think if the table today and as the week progresses, plays as it did in weeks one and two, I think he'll love it. Just his kind of playing surface, although won't be happy with that. Kiss on the red 21. just after potting the black was what did him in. He yeah, just shaved that red, didn't he, and just pulled up the white. So, but yeah, I think any any times the play, tables play really well, he loves it. Uh, he's always also using these extra hard tips, which he says he gets more even more feel. He just likes to sort of drop them in uh, I think sometimes if the tables aren't level catches them out a bit but fortunately at sort of this 21. level the tables are usually very good yeah playing at a, a quiet pace more often than not he's actually a throwback isn't he definitely definitely is yeah um, players now like to sort of punch the ball get through it and like you know sort of um, Sort of Ronnie O'Sullivan sort of always has to play a full shot. He don't, he don't hit them hard. Neil Robertson, Judd Trump, similar. That, that's here, the back of the pocket. But um, like you say, Mark sort of old school in that respect. But uh, it's, it's equally as effective. Um, it's, in a way, it makes the pockets bigger for him because, you know, the, the, the odd ball might drop that when others wouldn't. But uh, usually it's the middle anyway, so it won't seem bother. It won't make a difference. <laughs> He's also very clever, very clever player. That amount of times he goes for a ball and he might miss it, but he never seems to leave anything on, and that's not luck. He knows where he's putting the white in the right spots. Opponent Roy McLeod, who was relegated from the main tour at the end of last season. So you ask, why is he playing here? Well, he finished... 17th on the Q School top up list. Not all 128 professionals have entered this, so 
He comes in as a reserve. I think 17th he'll be getting limited starts, although they will crop up now and again. Yeah, Rory's the opposite to Mark as well. You, if more, Rory gets putting some balls, you'll see that he likes to sort of punch him in. He's the absolute opposite of the way he plays. was extremely fortunate as he missed the red by a mile and look where the cue ball is yeah, you can be as good as you like but you need them flicks in this game it's 2-0 the official head-to-head -head for Williams over McLeod both of their meetings came in very high-profile tournaments. Well, again, some luck coming into play. Yes, he took the cue ball back into bulk, fully intentionally. Rumble. But the fluke is going to be potentially very valuable because of that. Look. He's played that little roll in behind the brown. No guilt whatsoever. No, there's no uh, no time for guilt in this game. It happens enough. You'd have to remind yourself it happens enough against you. So when you get it, you'll take it. I think you'll notice, I've talked about it with Ben Wilson today with these tables. It might suit Mark because the pockets do. When you, when you drop the balls in, they will take them down the rail, these pockets. But I think as soon as you start hitting them, punching them in or hitting them hard, they do throw them out a lot a lot more than you'd expect, so I don't know whether that will help him today. I think it might. Otherwise, he'd been lucky there. Look at that knowledge. Now, if McLeod shakes his head here, you know he's got selective memory. <laughs> yes, yeah, sneaker players have very short memories when it comes to that. <laughs> Yeah, there are some players, they'll fluke a snooker against you and then you'll try and get out of it, leave it safe, and they'll be moaning. Why do we want names? We never divulge that. Yeah, just going back to their previous meetings, it's 2-0 for Williams, head-to-head -head wise. He beat McLeod 6-2 in a wildcard match at the 2010 Masters. And he also overcame McLeod 6-3 in the last 64 of the UK Championship in 2013. Now that wasn't recommended, missing the intended red completely and placing McLeod smack in amongst them. Yeah, it's a good chance, but... Although they are everywhere, there's a few puzzles to solve. Red's stopping the blue, going the, the middle pockets. So you want to try and free that as soon as you can. Didn't want that flip, but I think he's all what? right. I want to probably pot that red next to the pink as well soon. And that then it really opens up. Probably make his way down there somehow, probably the bridge over the middle. Goes. I think it does. Four. Probably see him make a little cannon here to move the red.
51 years of age now, McLeod. 10. Originally turned professional when the game opened its doors to anyone who would pay the, the entrance fee in 1991. Extended spider. He actually had five separate spells on the main tour. Longest unbroken, 2001 to 2019. Yeah, he's just another player from that generation that would just, there just seemed to be an endless supply of players coming through. There's still sort of a lot of them are still going now. Into a good chance now. I don't know whether Black goes in the right corner. Not sure. No, he's on the left corner. I don't know if it goes from here. But moving these reds will help the situation. They're not. 90. Not a good shot. But he's, he's okay. Cloud. Yeah, even 19. though he'd expect to get that pink, it's just it was a bad shot on the red, he was perfect. And then all of a sudden sometimes you can unravel so quick, you're not perfect on the pink, you have to play a cannon and you tip thick, so you'd be disappointed with that. What? Good observation about the pockets though earlier, Michael. Across this top rail, if you play them quietly, they will drop in. Funnily enough, we had Sean Murphy in the commentary box on the first two days of the event, and he almost Seven. immediately made that point as well. We're playing on the Rasson tables for this event. We also use them for Eight. the Invitation Championship League, which will begin in December, and also for the, the Champion of Champions, which, by the way, Mark Williams hasn't qualified for yet. He's the reigning British Open champion. But that was in the summer of last year, which got him into the, the tournament last season. So he's not won 15. a title since the British Open. And consequently, hasn't qualified 16. for the Champion of Champions yet. Yeah, it seems mad a bit, an event like that. I mean, not a minute, but um, that's, that's the criteria. Such a great event to be involved in. He's not alone, 23. Mark Selby's not there yet. Sean Murphy. 24. Me? Well, I didn't think it was worth mentioning because it was just assumed knowledge. Everybody would be shocked to hear I'm not in it, but you know, this time. You never know what's around the corner. Thirty. Now he, he knocked a red towards the cushion there. And he will still need this red. A colour and one more red after this. Well, he got hold of that cue ball far more than he anticipated. 31. Yeah, I thought, don't, don't surprise me on these cloths. They're so slippy. Going back to what you said about the tables, I felt with these rassons, they if you ask the fitters, they'll tell you they're really solid. You know, you need about 10 men to move them. I think because of that, again, it's just a theory. You seem to get a full bounce if you're going onto the cushion at pace a lot. It doesn't trap as much. And I think that's what makes the pockets at pace a little bit tighter because as soon as it hits the cushion, it sort of throws them into the middle of the table. Similar to when they're worn, there's less slippiness. Um, but again, it's just my half baked theory, really. But it seems to work like that. Williams weighing up the pros and cons. Is it really worth 
extra points by potting a ball when he knows position isn't obtainable? Would it be more sensible to knock a, a big colour safe? Or any colour safe? Yeah, that's the fight he's having in his head at the minute. Not sure. Maybe putting a colour safe, that's what he's trying to do. I don't think I'll do him any harm, that's good. Mark Williams, 31. You know what we say, though, about him being such a clever player? Always has been. Yeah, it's just more evidence of him being a snooker geek, really, in that respect. He knows all the shots, he knows what's happening. He knows what you're going to play before you do. Um, that really, that really goes against that relaxed attitude he's got as if he had no care in the world, but fully aware of exit, everything that's going off. Throughout the course of the game's history, there have always been players who give the mistaken impression that they're laid back. Two world champions, apart from Williams, come to mind. Fred Davis and the king of the 70s, Ray Reardon. They were so hard-nosed, and yet they were laughing and getting the crowd on their side when they were playing. But you knew deep down they were ruthless. Yeah, you don't have the success like that unless you're an animal, basically. Um, you know, it's impossible, really. Um, I, don't, I mean, it's his character to be like that, relaxed. But um, yeah, when it come, when it boils down to it, he's you know the hardest of competitors. Well, that should be the frame now. Williams already 32 points ahead if he pots this red. And let's assume the black. A couple of snookers will be required. One. <coughs> Mark Williams, eight. I think he might have sacrificed the snooker there because he didn't want the, the red to hit the pink. Yeah, he made sure that he didn't cannon that pink and hopefully, hopefully got it more than played it directly. I mean, it's not, there is hope for Rory where the balls are, but not great. Mark Williams has won so much. He might well have won so much more. What about that UK final? He was up against John Higgins. 9-5 up, lost 10-9. And Higgins, during the course of that comeback, salvaged a frame after needing a snooker. Yeah, that happened to the best of us. <laughs> or, um, <laughs> yeah, so it's, um, it's when you're playing at that high level with a, another incredible snooker player, snooker royalty, it's going to happen, but it's, it would have been hard to take. And as, as relaxed as he is, that would have been a frosty drive home, I'd have thought. Well, he lost three big finals in relatively quick succession in similar circumstances. Australian Open to Stuart Bingham after being in front. Shanghai Masters to Mark Selby, having been within touching distance of the trophy. And then that UK Championship final I was mentioning. But he bounced back so well. Yeah, I think that's one of the big oh. traits that the champions have. They can just Mark bounce Williams back. Still got that. They still, Although they've <coughs> gutted to lose, they've still got that 
that belief in themselves that they can sort of do it again. Um, yeah, he's obviously got it. One. Now that's the kind of Mark Williams floater we were telling you about. That pocket weight, and then he can play the power shots as well. I'm sure that McLeod will remain in his yeah. seat. Yeah, doesn't even... Six, and the first frame. ...want to see Williams Mark. play the yellow, which he wouldn't have been able to pot. And so, Williams, that was a typical frame for him, controlling it, looking good at times, and he leads Rory McLeod 1-0. It. You can't say that's the killer blow. Well, you can say it was a hammer blow. Two devastating breaks. He's on the brink. One on one throw, Sullivan. He's got a frame on the board. He looked mighty good in doing it. What a way to open your account for the season. I get the feeling it will not be his last trophy this campaign. Mark Williams, the top seed in this Group 5. I thought he Second frame. looked pretty engaged in the opening frame. frame against Rory McLeod. Still inevitably shaking off a little bit of early season competitive rust. But I just get the impression with him, he's got a burning desire to make the champion of champions. If he could win this group... I think he might be hard to beat when we get down to winner's week. Well, it all starts two weeks today. Yeah, as, as you get further on in the tournament, the fresher starts to mount. People start to get a bit more focused on maybe winning. And, um, yeah, he's one of the players that can sort of deal with that. Get more and more interested. Chance the shot's nothing behind the black. Yeah, here he has. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll fancy this. It'll suit his. Too thin. It's a good, nice red for him. Nice, easy red. Though he's. Might be a bit thin. It looked like it was easily potable from here, so obviously didn't fancy it. It's also surprised he didn't go free. He can't have think it went, because even if he had to hit and hope a little bit and just pot the red, but obviously didn't like it, so him safe.
over on table two. The, the first frame is in the books there as well, as we see McLeod make a very thin contact. I can tell you Gary Wilson won the first frame against Harvey Chandler on the black. That looks a bit of trouble. I don't think you can see the red on the left hand side of the table because the brown's in the way. Because the green's in the way, the right hand side of the packet can't get past there. Maybe the second red in him might be too but he's got to do it quite thick. Oh, he's trying here. That's probably the dump shot. Yeah. Played the in off, that is old school. Yeah, good tap on the tail. It was a good shot that was. Good out. Sometimes you just got to get out there alive. McLeod today is trying to do something that, as yet, we've not seen in this Bed Victor Championship League. This time around, he's the the lowest seed in the group and the number four seed in any group. Well, none of them have managed to finish top yet. We've had 16 completed groups. Eight top seeds have been successful. Six second seeds, two third seeds, no fourth seeds. As for the countries getting through, we've had seven English group winners, five from China, two from the Republic of Ireland, one from Belgium, and one fellow countryman of Mark Williams. The Welshman through so far, Jamie Jones. Just a statistics masterclass. Well, you've got to do your research. I didn't remember all that. Now, that would be a little bit worrying. I said you did. I wouldn't have told anyone. I don't know if you've seen it. There is a shot here. If he plays that red, he try and get the the white behind the sort of green line and snooker mark on the red on the left hand side with the brown that's if that plant don't go that he's looked at I don't think it's a plant it might be that's why he's trying to move it I left him a shot on here there might be a route behind the yellow here if he's not a red onto pot Going for this. Again, Michael, as you mentioned in the first frame, one of those two in one shots where he knew had the, the red gone, he would have been in position on the yellow. There was always the chance of possibly leaving this red. He knew it wasn't going to be easy. Yeah, he's like a poker player playing the, playing the odds all the time. Really good at it. There's a chance of going for the red in the middle and playing for the black there, but been a bit more patient.
I think he thought about trying to get behind the yellow there, but that red on the right, is, it's on if it's the white's in a nice spot for it. So when the sort of negative safety, keeping alive. Often not advisable to get into a, a game of cat and mouse with Williams because more often than not, you're the mouse. Yeah, definitely. Same with Mark Selby. I just feel like he's trying to set some trap somewhere. But that's a good shot from Rory there. About as best he could do. I don't think Mark can go direct to a red, so he might come off the side rail and he's always risk leaving some of then. A brilliant touch, brilliant shot. Forty-seven years of age now, Mark Williams. Still inside the the world's top eight. Yeah, just Touch one of those three. Um, just snooker royalty, just brilliant. Like I said before, I don't think I don't think you can have a better temperament. I'd love to just feel or think the way he thinks when he's when it means most most to him. It's just incredible ability he's got there. You can reel off all of these many achievements, but I think perhaps the the proudest, and this is subjective, I know, but I think the proudest is the fact he won what for me was the greatest ever world final in 2018 against John Higgins. It had drama and quality combined. We've had more dramatic finals. We've had high quality finals, but the two together, for me, that was the the most enjoyable world final ever. Yeah, I don't think anybody can argue that really. I think the way John came back at him, you know, it was just, I wasn't even playing, I was scared for him. So, yeah, and, and like two of the greatest ever for all those things, like you say, they're in the mix. And just to, like when he sort of, he missed game ball, didn't he? He missed match ball. And then John cleared up, is that right? And then, and then the next time he rolls a red in and makes 60 odd, uh, just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Yeah, it was the pink in the, the penultimate frame, and he's right on the, the brink of being crown world champion again after a 15-year absence from his second triumph, Williams. Higgins dug deep, cleared up, and you think, oh, Mark might be vulnerable now, and yet when the chance arose, he took it. Yeah, I think it was off a long red as well. He just dropped it in from on the on the top rail and just... And then, yeah, and you, I mean, that's part in the red one thing but then having to sort of hold himself together and score because the funny thing with the world, world championship I always think that no matter how experienced a player is it's still they're still when they turn up to the crucible they're as nervous as they can be because it's just I think it's a leveler in that respect everybody's nervous as they can be but just to perform and just did what he did there was just yeah freak freakishly good And wow. that was good as well. What a pot. Talk about how to open a frame up. Yeah, brilliant shot. Just seen the gap. I played at a good pace, get on the yellow. Now he has got a good chance. Got to keep a tight white because he, he had a good chance before and run out of position. So Great. maybe we are what the table's playing like now. So we'll see how it goes. Four. He doesn't have to do anything for a while. Just pick these reds off. Just make him make his way down the table. 
but even situations like this, Eight. still got to keep a tight white. You can unravel really quick and really keep focused. Nine. That's perfect. Probably play a cannon there. Two reds now. Not too hard, just down the red next to him. And it'll sort of open up. Pink mark come available. No, it's not. What do I know? So, he's going to pick him off. 60. Twenty two. Don't know where the pink goes so many options here he can do what he likes really but if he did land on it land on it low 23 maybe nudge a few out but like I say don't have to 30. tournament winner on the professional tour McLeod won the Ruhr Open in Germany in 2015 31 yeah it's, you've got to in the end of the day won a tournament you've got to be a decent player to do that and now he's I talked to him about that and he's sort of really proud of himself which, as he should be Still going now, so you never know what's around the corner. You've got to keep batting. 38. Thirty-nine. Don't think he was happy with that. I think don't think he judged that as well as he'd like. Now he's got to Is it and the cannon's still on, I think, but it can go wrong, so gotta make sure he gets this right. Oh, we have to screw for the other red. He's miscued. Yeah, just trying to nip into the white there to hold it because he knows he could have run right, away and he's ended up miscuing. Now, look, he, he left the red to middle there for a split second and then the pink came back. And not the, the white out of the way. many players you'd put in front of Mark Williams when it comes to clearing up so when you've got a 39 point lead and you what? had a chance when you play Mark Williams give him a chance the anxiety levels are a bit higher than most so he's not going to do a bit of work yet I think he'll also relish the fact that on this table when it comes to screwing back it's all about timing, not especially power, because the table is so reactive. But I have noticed if there is a, a weakness in Williams's game, certainly in the last five years, let's say, when he does have to revert to putting power into shots, he is a little more susceptible. 
Yeah, I think he's got a shorter technique than some, so obviously it's a bit more of an effort to sort of accelerate um, to the pace you need to, but I mean, you know, when the tables play like this, you very rarely need any power, so you know, he's, he's more than more than capable of getting enough on, so they're not there, I think, whether the red or the pink goes. Might play a cannon at some point. He got high on that pink, so, oh no, the red goes, so all opening up. I think. 13. Just look at that, that red doors here. Just look at the back of them. Yeah. And that was experience, just making absolutely sure he's got his, the referee on side. He said the red will go. Brendan Moore looked and said, yes, it definitely will. And now when the pink goes back on the table, red, for all intents and purposes, will go again. Yeah, that's probably experience through a scar in the past where <laughs> some referees put it on and it don't go. So, yeah, knows, knows everything, seen it all. The other thing here is Brendan goes about his delicate work. He's 90. got to put the pink as close to that red without touching it as he can. Whether you're trying to shave past them now. Thanks. Twenty. Yeah, the other good thing for Williams here is that the awkward red on that right hand side cushion in bulk. He's actually much more accessible for a left-hander than a right-hander. And now, with that split, even though he's still behind in the frame, Michael, he's favourite. Yeah, he played that cannon perfect there. It wasn't it was not much luck involved there. He knew what he was trying to do, getting that little gap. He knew that the pace he's played is more than likely going to land. Just more evidence of his touch and his key wall control. I think with Mark, the, the, the white doesn't seem to travel 35. very far. It's just little, little stun shots, 36. soft screws, just a master at it. Forty-three. Forty-four. It is. Looks easy, but he's, he's played absolutely perfect to get the right angle to go up for the red. It's so easy to not land there, but I mean, he literally couldn't put it any better with his hand. And again, there. He's too straight, really. 50. There, he's not a bit of angle, but he'll probably screw back and get on something. Fifty-one. That was a much better shot than it might have appeared. At that pace, even that kind of pot was missable. Didn't quite get hold of the blue as he wanted to. Nevertheless, he's now 17 ahead. So yellow, green and brown 56. will do the trick. Fifty-eight. Sixty-one. A surprising misjudgment, just short of the line. But no bother. Yeah, easy peasy. Sixty-five. I mean, just sometimes with that sort of shot, you sh you know you're perfect. You know you should be perfect the next shot. It's easy to miss that because your mind is spot. You know you're annoyed at yourself, but he just gets down, Mark just drops 65. it in. He knows a shot. He, can, he knows it's a shot he can get, and then it goes. So yeah, just more evidence of that champion's mentality. Fifty-nine. 
26 adrift. McLeod with 18 on, so he needs a couple of snookers. Goes off the side rail here. Chance of a snooker back, but he's got to catch it perfect. Good pace. There we go. Oh, nearly, nearly. <coughs> now, I told you, Gary Wilson won the first frame on the black. Well, he won the second frame as well, and now he's poised to win 3 0. As Williams Five. is guaranteed to be 2 0 up. On table one. Mark Williams, five. And the frame. Yeah, McLeod concedes. He was leading 39-0 in that frame. Miscued, and it cost him dear. Williams put together a 65 clearance to Brown, and with that, he doubles his advantage. In the first phase of the Bet Victor Championship League, the groups are numbered. When we get to the second phase, which is winner's week, they will be going by letters. Mark Williams is trying to get into Group E. Third frame. To join Rory McLeod to Aaron Hill, Lu Ning, and the winner of Group 21, which is coming up tomorrow. Steve Maguire, Si Jawi. Matthew Stevens and Mitchell Mann. And as you can see, Williams has made an agreeable start. 2 0 ahead of Rory McLeod. Can he capitalise and gain a full three points? Well, it's the perfect start on table two for Gary Wilson, who defeats Harvey Chandler 3-0. The action over there is group 28. One. Could have gone into him from there if he wanted, but he's trying to pick up your first. Not perfect, although he's a shot he'll expect to get this red. He's going to need to move some balls at some point soon. spot on the blue there to move them. Nope. 
Eight. Don't think he's landed very good there. I think, I think he's straight on the bottom red. The other red, he might, have, he might kind of the red screwing up. Have to really get into this to get up. I don't know what you're going to play here. Get through, so it was all Nine. right. I'm playing this black. I don't know if this red next to the black spot goes. If it does, it would be a big help to him. Let me just quickly tell you, Gary Wilson completed that 3-0 win over Harvey Chandler with a break of 96. Next up on table two, it's Jack Jones against Barry Pinches. I think that's why he probably nodded his head a couple of shots ago when he got on that red straight because I think he wanted to play that red to get on the black knowing that the black then will be free so i a bit of work now Seventeen. That's got an angle. If he's got a little bit of an angle, he needs a little bit, and he's he's in a good spot. But looks okay. That if he can top that in, he's going to move him. Look and see if there's a plant. But that looks to me he's good. Just really top this in. If you're Thanks. new to the Bet right. Victor Championship League, 20. well, first of all, nice to have you with us. It's a 128 player event, world ranking tournament to start off the brand new snooker season. Those 128 players are divided into 32 four player groups. Williams almost knocks in a, a plant, but look where the cue ball is. Yeah, so we have 32 initial groups. The winner of each of those groups goes into the last 32 of the event. They'll be split into eight four-player groups. The eight winners play in two more groups, and the two winners will play off in the, the title decider. And the tournament will finish two weeks on Friday. Michael would be surprised to see Mark Williams with the silverware at the end of it. Although for him, that was a poor one. Yeah, he didn't catch that right at all, did he? He's not left. I mean, he's left a red in the middle, I think. But pink and black on in a great spot. So, got loads of work to do. Gonna need a decent shot to get perfect on that red if he's 
the red near the yellow he's playing for. Why not two rest two cushions here to get on it? No. Could roll it in, try and get it in the middle. That we're near the way the white is, I think. But and it's not a natural shot here. He's going to make create an angle, whatever he's doing. Makes the pot a lot harder. Yes, yeah, what he did. I'm trying to create that wider angle, he's ended up going too far. Roy McLeod, six. White just keeps on going. These tables I think it's going to pull up, but end up being nearly per well, virtually perfect. behind the red if he goes for it the red the next to it to come up safe I'm not sure fancy this yeah it's a good shot yeah very what? good First really unexpected ball missed by Williams. Oh, Williams won. Yeah. Can't believe I missed that. I didn't expect it anyway. They're absolutely One. perfect, so now we can I don't know where the black would be tied up maybe if it goes on its spot after this. I don't think there's much you can do to sort of move it. You could maybe move the red and then get on the red in the right corner, that's right, and then it's starting to move the black spot. I'll get get it open anyway. Eight. Nine. It's a decent shot that was. It's not perfect yet. He's going to play another good screw shot, I think, for the blue. I think it's a shot of fancy. He's not, not scared of it. Isn't it? The power is Rory. 50. There he is, perfect. I don't know whether that red above the pink goes. He's having a look there. Building a, a very useful lead in this frame. 20. Twenty-one. We've seen in these groups so often. If you lose your first match, yes, mathematically you can win the group, but it's highly unlikely. If you gain a, a two-all draw to start things out, and that's still very much within McLeod's capabilities, then you've got something to build on. Yeah, but like you say, it's not impossible. You've got to keep punching. But if you can get a draw out of this, it'll feel like a win, really, for him. 
26. More reds and therefore 59 points on the table. And the black would take McLeod into the snooker's required stage for Williams. Yeah, he could try and roll that red in, but still not won yet. You don't want to give Mark a good chance for a counter because you'll know how clever Mark is. Rory McLeod. He does get a chance, he'll mop some balls up and then play for the snookers. felt in these situations it can look so a player can look so strong favorite and then a one good pot a shot that develops something and all of a sudden they've got a chance of an easy snooker and you're in a position where <laughs> you could lose a frame very very easily so Roy will know that so he's got to sort of keep his wits about him and not make any do anything silly yeah the other thing in McLeod's favor is the fact that he's 62 ahead so even if Williams extracted four penalty points. He would then need four reds, four blacks, and all the colours to win by a single point. Oh, and therefore knocking the black safe is most certainly not in his favour. Yeah, he'd be doing cartwheels when he saw that black go there. Mentally, anyway. <laughs> So almost immediately the, the black is returned into open play. That's Williams' lifeline. Yeah, and that red's in a nice spot for a snooker behind the yellow. Or we could go for this. I think he can go for the red under the pink. It's like a shot to nothing. But these sort of situations, you, he could draw that, leave it in the jaws of the pocket. All of a sudden, Mark's mopping up black reds and blacks. But we'll see how this... It works out like that. Got it's not in the jaws, but he's got a chance. He'll probably go for this if he can. Wanted to get the cue ball past the black. And when he caught it, that's problems. Nice pot on the pink. But now Williams is 55 behind with 51 on. If he gets a four-point penalty snooker, Seven. the best he can do now. Three reds, three blacks, and all the colours to force a respotted black. Eight. Yeah, obviously, worst position to be in, but if he can get 
with the red with the black where the that last red is near the yellow he can play a really good snooker and he'll try and put the and it's, he's got to get there first but he'll try Good. and put the red near a ball color so that the free ball's on but he's, he's got, still got a tough red to play here might not get this Sixty. it's a brilliant shot and <laughs> when you sit in there you're thinking he not get this he not get this slots it straight in and now all of a sudden that's what he's looking at there so the snooker should be virtually guaranteed but he'll you will try and, like I say, try and put the red somewhere with that three balls on. Perfect to do that. So, probably see the red go near the green or brown. He's not played it, so. <laughs> He's still Part in trouble, though. 23. Yeah, he's taken that near side cushion away. And ironically, the, the ball that caused him the problems in the first place, the missed yellow off its spot, is now potentially coming to his assistance. Yes. Um, it's not a natural angle. I think the blue's in the way for that shot. Might have to chat to him later and tell him he played the wrong shot there. I think he could have tried and got a free ball, but what do I know? Definitely going to have a chat with him. I played the wrong shot there. Good escape, though, wasn't it? Absolutely on the nose. Yeah, very good. Williams still in deep trouble, but he was a fraction of an inch away there from almost certainly losing the frame. This is how we like it. All of the match outcomes, win or draw, depending on the very last frame. Rory McLeod hoping for a two-all draw and for points to be shared. Mark Williams breaking off, it's looking fine. for a 3-1 win. Yeah, and nice, a yeah. full complement of Final three point. points Mark Williams to, break. to open up Group 5 and to move to the top of the table immediately. First of two trips here this week for Mark Williams. He will be back on Friday. We have four days of competition in the, the Bed Victor Championship League this week. And then from Friday for the next couple of days until Sunday, it's the first segment of European Masters qualifying. And Williams plays Liam Highfield. You know, when a, a player at this level goes in off, 
directly after potting a ball. You can't really say bad luck, but I think it partially applied there. Yeah, I mean, you'll know he's not the best, greatest shot in the world, but he tried to play it. I always look at it like, if I tried to One. play the in off, how many times would I get it? But yeah, I think in the end, it'd be just not caught it right, basically, and got too much on it or not enough, whatever he's played. Because the, the middle bag's always the same place. This is a good chance for Rory now. Be out in the open. Pots and red spear above Six. the black. Pots one, the other one becomes available, so don't really need to do much. Just keep getting the right angle. Seven. And there will be two players backstage who will be cheering on McLeod here, i.e. the other two players in this group, Andrew Padgett and Lee Hang, who go head-to-head -head next. A draw would suit them just fine. Yeah, definitely. 14. I don't know whether he's got this. He's got the right angle here. He's going to be, yeah, he's... Might be straight. Yeah, to get high on 50. that, really. I'd be disappointed now. He's he's still OK, but he's now he's got a bit of work to do. Just another example of how he can just unravel. It was absolutely perfect. Now he's got to play a shot. That's not natural. Blue ball. It's kind of blue that he practices a lot. So fancy getting it but because of what's gone before because it was perfect and it's a shot I don't want to be playing it makes it harder he has to sort of try and forget all that easier said than done but put a good strike on it he'll probably get it no Rory McLeod Just 15 he'd be annoyed at himself there he had a great chance yeah considering the the opportunity Presented to McLeod with the in-off from Williams. 15 points is a scant reward. Yes. Yeah. When you're playing someone like Mark Williams, you don't want to keep missing chances like that because nice. you'll only get stronger. One. See that pre-shot routine there again. So he stood behind it and then he just approaches it. Really big shot coming up now. Yeah, he shaved that red. Not absolutely perfect, but oh, he's all right. He was better angle than I thought. That red must go, so he's okay. 20. No, he looked at a plan. I didn't think it went, that red. I think he has played on the plan, but come too far, look. And now he's thinking about trying to knock that red onto that. But that's, yeah, you can see, he looked away there, annoyed at himself. Uh, sometimes a player can play this shot because they're annoyed, but... What are you doing? 
he's played that plan, yep. 21. You know, I'm not saying he did it there, but throughout his career, Mark Williams, he's been one of those players, and he's perfectly entitled to do it, who expresses disappointment about a, a certain layout of the balls and then just gets down and nonchalantly knocks one in and clears up, leaving the opponent in his chair quietly stewing. 24. Yeah, the fake moan. Yeah, they're uh, very annoying. Yeah, yeah, as in a part, when you sit in your chair, you get all excited, thinking, oh, have I got to go? I've got a reprieve. And, you know, 50 points later, shaking his hand. <laughs> He's perfectly entitled to do it. He could be shaking 52. his head about the, the price of petrol or current state of the economy, whatever. 33. But what it does, as Michael said, it raises expectations in the opposing chair. Yeah, you start fiddling for your chalk, thinking, oh, here we go. Like I say, you don't get another shot. 40. I mean... I do think about the economy quite a lot when I'm playing. <laughs> maybe that's just me. Yeah, maybe your own personal economy. That's probably the problem, Michael. <laughs> 41. But these are positions where he's just a master at, really. I think it might be the kiss of death for him, but just lay it up. 49. Get high. Don't want to be straight. Makes every shot, the next shot, natural shot. It's not going to create anything. Look. That's why it's the a master break builder, really. 56. It's one thing knowing it and the next thing doing it. 37 in front now, so... This red and either pink or black will be enough. 57. Oh, high again. He's missed the black, can you believe it? Mark Williams, 57. Well, when he caught the black, I thought it was... Heading towards that far jaw. Yeah, caught a lot of it. Tell me the whites and behind the yellow. Oh, what a bump. That's the, I was just going to say that sometimes when you miss a black like that, the game can come and punish you, but that's them that we were talking about the other day. Those players don't get that bad luck. They, them. Oh, they're so annoying. Oh, there we go. All sweetness and light now for Mark. <laughs> And McLeod falls 42 points adrift. He can still win with two reds, two blacks, and all the colours. That's why Brendan Moore quite correctly calling a miss. Yeah. Thank you. Could have a pop at this red, but you don't want to leave an easy chance. I think maybe we could play the red in the top left at the, the the yellow pocket and not leave only red he can leave is that he's on. If he knocks it in he's won. That's what he's done. That was probably the right shot. There's a double on here. 
he wants to go for it. The biggest concern to Williams as he shakes his head. Not an awkward ball on the table. No double, but decent shot that. Could get a lead from this. Maybe trying to hit the red thin, maybe an in off. And now, what an unexpected opportunity to steal the frame by a single point. Yeah, he might not get away with it. So, what? really big visit um, in what in the, how this group could end up. This. It seems an easy situation here, but he wants to get on the red to get that for the black. But you don't want to snooker himself because there's a lot of situations that, yeah, places where he could. So he's sort of played the easy shot. But he's got to negotiate his way down to get, the, to get the black. So it's not simple, this. Caught that a little bit thick. Using the right hand side, it's pushed into it with slippy cloths and it caught it too thick, not potted into the middle of the pocket. So he's run up a bit short. Keep looking at the scoreboard. It's not going to change. Well, he's got to pot the thing. Then he can also respot it in black more. with the six colours. Obviously, the black would be <coughs> nigh on an impossibility. <laughs> can't believe he's... Can't believe he's thinking about the green, can you? Can't believe it. Yeah, he's, surely he's going to play the pink here, yeah. It's a shot I fancy, but in the position he was in, it'll be a bit annoyed. That's yeah, a good shot. It's a good pot, that is. He's still in it. I wonder if it's a bad flick. Oh. And he's all right. <laughs> 15. When you're in your chair in 17. this position, you just, after missing that black you missed, you're just thinking, I know he's going to clear up, I know he's going to clear up. <laughs> Could have all been so different, but. He's just got to sit there and suffer now. One of the oddest things about this game. 20. Well, that was a very poor positional shot. Quite a large margin of error. Yes, the brown still goes, but he did not put the white anywhere near there. Now, it's that bad. It's, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> He says he's got a, got it in the middle. Oh yeah, he's a bit lucky really to land there because it was 24. natural, but he's still not got the right angle here. It's unraveling a little bit, but I don't know what he's going to do. I think he might just roll it in and play a long pink. Might not, he might play safe, but shot is on. But in these sort of situations, a player seems forced like he's got to go for it. Twenty-nine. Yeah, I think he's right at the end off. He's put himself in position, a tough position now. Probably play the the pink underneath the black, play it thin. Hit it too thick. Roy McLeod, 29. 
at least he's still in the frame and 10 minutes ago that looked highly unlikely first match of the group and these are very important exchanges in a situation where the, the pot's on but unless he hits it really hard and goes back up the table probably won't go for it because he can't get on the black and maybe just play it thin again Whether he played to pot that or not, but that, yeah, prob probably probably the thin safety. Over the years, Williams has been renowned for winning a very high percentage of frames go down to the late colours. Yeah, it's more it's so much his mindset. It's just yeah. he can sort of forget what's happened before and just when he gets his opportunity he can just to pot that ball he can get it. Just brilliant really. Mark's with the same, you can have like an hour, seems like an hour's worth of safety and then get the chance and they can do it. It's just really tough to do that is. An easy on here. You could maybe double the pink twice across the table behind the black. Play the double I suppose, but it's no not much not much value. He has. He's, he's played that double there. He's leaving himself a, a long black. Thought the the blue when he played it, put the white in the jaws to try and punch it in and get on the pink was the easier than that. But different how players see it when they're out there. Williams was fortunate with his last shot. He didn't intend the pink to make contact with the black, and so for pink to run safe was a real bonus. Got a couple of doubles on, don't really replay it. He has. It's in. Six. All of that work, the missed black, and then in the end, Williams wins.